if you've ever wanted your kettle to be filled to the exact amount of water that you need and not monitor it while you're doing it, you're probably interested in a flow meter. I've got one that Digiten sent me. We'll take a look at it. How's it going? My name is Brian. I'd like to welcome you to another video. If you'd like to learn more about electric brewing, see how-to videos and product reviews just like this one, consider subscribing. And if you do, don't forget to click that bell so you won't miss a video when it comes out. Full disclosure on this, Digiten did send me the DFC-15 for review. They contacted me and asked me if I could review some of their products. So let's take a look at what comes in the box. All right, so what comes in the box is the controller itself, a wiring harness that has plugs for the flow meter, the solenoid for controlling the water flow, as well as a temperature sensor, a solenoid for controlling the flow, and also a flow meter to track the flow of water as it's going through the system. It also comes with a 12 volt power supply brick, a bracket to hold the solenoid. It also comes with a fold out manual on how to control and set different settings in it. I'll leave links in the description for various places that you can buy this around the world. Let's take a look at my situation and how I'm going to install it in my RO reservoir system. All right, so where we're going to install the flow control device is going to actually be in line with the RO system pump. And so I'm going to actually have to cut a section of the PEX pipe out of here. And that's why I've got the PEX connectors. And what I'll do, uh, i got to use a fair amount of... Teflon tape with this and one of the reasons also is the the threads on both the flow meter as well as the relay are all British straight pipe thread but as you can see NPT fittings screw on there just fine so I don't think we'll have an issue there so I'll have the relay below the flow control put the flow control above it and there is an arrow pointing on there which way it should be going so you want to make sure you pay attention to that We'll have it in there like that and then basically this will sit here and i'm going to put the controller right here so that i can just come in here and put in all the information and then one of the other things that i did add to the room in here since the last time i showed everything I put a plug up here so that i can plug in both the pump for the system as well as the power supply for the flow control. So let me get all this stuff cut up, spliced in, and I'll be back here in just a minute to show you what it looks like after all that is done. Okay, I got everything installed. A couple of things that I want to point out that I had a little bit of an issue with because I don't think I was paying real close attention whenever I installed the valves and everything. I wanted to have the valves so that all the connectors were pointing in this direction since that's where the controller was. And in doing so, I actually had the solenoid valve flipped so you want to make sure that when you install it, that you have the solenoid installed so that there's a screen inside in the end of it. You want to make sure that the screen is facing towards the flow. So however the flow is coming, you want to make sure that the screen is facing it, which makes sense because the screen will keep stuff out of the solenoid valve. So all that is taken care of. The other thing is when I had the system first hooked up, I did not have the, the K value, which is like the sensor value was way way off so i have spent some time and wasted a little bit of ro water unfortunately but <laughs> um i got it dialed in i will show you how all of the settings and features and all that stuff work or at least most of them what i'm going to use anyways so i'm going to move the camera a little bit closer and we'll take a look at it and i'll show you that now all right so i'll run you through the menu system first so this is what the main menu looks like now when you get the unit it is actually set up for liters and i'll show you how to change that so if you push the up and down arrow at the same time, it'll actually change it to liters from gallons, which is how I had it changed. You change it back to gallons, just push the up and down arrow and uh, it'll change. Now I have the uh, temperature sensor just hanging here. I didn't have a need for it really to be in the flow. So I, I wanted to hook it up so there was an error message here. But if you want to change that from Celsius to Fahrenheit, which I've already changed it to Fahrenheit, you just push the menu and the up arrow and that will change it to Celsius. And then I'll just change it back real quick here. All right, so there's a few different options. The main one that I am interested in is this quantitative. So basically, whatever you set this figure right here to be, that is what the amount of water that the system will let flow through. So how you do that is you just press the set button, hold it down until you see the numbers start to flash. And then you can set your figures by using the up and down arrows. So right there is zero. So if I wanted a half a gallon, I could just put in 0.5 and hit set. 
then hit menu. And then when I hit run, it will actually start to begin. It'll begin totaling up the amount of liquid flowing through. And when it gets to a half a gallon, it'll stop. Now it shows one gallon because that's actually how much I've used or how much I've done since I figured everything out to do the calibration on this. I've wasted a little bit of water, but so in order to clear this total, you just press the clear and hold it and that will clear out the total gallons. Now it's always gonna stay set on the, whatever quantity value you have, so you have to change it every single time you use the system depending on how much water you want. Now here's one of the things that was not so obvious. It's also got a max alarm for maximum amount of gallons, which I'm not really worried about that, but if you wanted to use this as a, like a, a water meter to give you an alarm when you've used so much water, let's say if your you know, water costs you so much money, you can actually set it up to where it will give you an alarm whenever you've reached that maximum amount of water. So here is the K value. Now what the K value is, this sensor actually has a certain resistance or value to it. And the K value is set depending on what sensor you have, how much flow you have, etc. Now the way that you change this is when you get to this password, you're gonna press and hold the set button down. And then you're gonna go one, set button, two, set button, three, set button, four set button and then it will let you change the K value. So this is a setting that I would advise you could probably start with this 28.3 K. And that actually was able to exactly dispense one gallon. And I'll show you that here in just a few minutes. But once you get everything set up and you may have to adjust this depending on how your flow is for your faucet, they do make some different sensors that have different fitting attachments. One for like uh, John Guest type fittings that has a more finite or lower measurable amount that it uses. So if you do have one of those, you might want to look at that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go out and I'm going to open up the faucet and I've got a gallon pitcher out there. I'm going to put the gallon pitcher on a scale and we'll open up the faucet and then we'll set this thing up to run and I'll show you exactly how much is dispensed and we'll take a look at how accurate this thing is. All right, here we go. We're going to hit the run button and it should open up this solenoid and allow everything to start flowing. I'm going to go out there and take a look at where we are with our measurement and let's see how we wind up. And water weighs 8.35 pounds per gallon at room temperature. We are 8.35 pounds. So as you saw, this thing is very, very accurate. I'm excited to use it on a brew day. A quick update on the RO system that I installed recently. The reservoir has not had any issues at all with you know, contamination or smells or anything like that. I have since the initial installation installed a DI filter or a deionization filter. And so now I am actually getting like 100% zero water out of it. Again, if you're interested in the device, there will be links in the description down below. This has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. We'll see you on the next video.